Hey everybody, Jacqueline here. So what is a sketchbook for? That is what we're going to be delving into today and I'm going to be sharing tips and different things of what you can do to start a brand new sketchbook. A new sketchbook can be so exciting when you get it in the mail, when you go to an art supply store and you get your next sketchbook. I am a person that likes to finish sketchbooks before I pop into a new one, or at least get really close to finishing a, my previous sketchbook before I get a new one. So I did get this one recently. This is a Royal Talons art creation little sketchbook. I'll put all the specs right up here because I don't know them on top of my head, but it is just the perfect little tiny pocket one. And I'm very excited and also a little bit intimidated to start a new sketchbook. I'm sure you as an artist may also feel this same feeling of feeling exhilarated, but then also, ah, what do I do right away? So I'm going to show you a few things that I do just to prep my sketchbook. But before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit more about having sketchbooks. Again, what is a sketchbook used for? It is a safe space for you to Put all of your thoughts, ideas, creations, explorations, like trying different medias with, within all your art supplies because this is my little, little bundle I have here on my desk that I'm going to be playing around with. It is a place to be messy. It's a place to be super clean. It's to get all your ideas out because maybe, maybe you use a sketchbook to come up with all your ideas for then a bigger piece of artwork. I've done that in the past. You also don't have to share it. Like if you don't want to share it on social media, by all means, don't share it on social media. Share it later down the line when you're halfway through a sketchbook and you want to show all your favorite pieces. Like you can totally do that. I don't always show what's in my sketchbook. Sometimes when I'm actually sketching in it, I will share on social media, but Sometimes I just don't share a lot of them. So for me, a sketchbook is not only working through ideas and playing around with different art mediums, it is also a place I look for inspiration. So I can look through old sketchbooks and I can flip through, see how I've improved on certain things. This particular sketchbook was a lot more graphite, um, some colors, some paints, but mostly graphite things that I was painting, landscapes, botanicals. And I can look through and see things that I like, see things that I need to improve on, see things I have improved on. And it also brings me back wonderful, wonderful memories. Like when I had to go out to the PNW for work, I went out to a lighthouse and painted. We got um, a little a little place right on the ocean when I was in Oregon and, and I painted, you know, sand dollars. So it also brings back wonderful memories, especially since I like to take my sketchbooks out with me as well, like whether I'm traveling, whether I'm doing plain air painting, which I also do just sheets of watercolor paper or, you know, whichever paper, but I also like bringing sketchbooks out with me. So it's also a wonderful place to go down memory lane. So grab your old sketchbooks, flip through them. It also can help you come up with ideas for your new sketchbook. Um, so that's just one thing that I love, love, love about sketchbooks. So now I wanna pop over here onto my desk and I wanna show you what I do to prep and personalize and make this not so daunting of a brand new sketchbook. So let's go over here. So here is my new sketchbook that I have. As you can see, it has this little band here and I want to kind of tuck that back because it kind of just gets in my way. So we'll just tuck it right back here. So the first thing I like to do in a new sketchbook, depending on what type it is, is kind of break it in a little bit. Um, some of them lay flat better, but sometimes I like to just give it a nice, you know, stretch of the spine, essentially. And it just kind of helps stretch out all those papers. If there's any like of that binding glue or something that you might need to fix, like see how this one lays more flat than this one just needs a little bit of a stretch and flatten them a little bit. You can go page by page if you want. You can also just stretch a few of them out. But I just wanted to show you that I like to just begin this way. OK, 
Okay, so now I've been able to get that spine more relaxed. And right here in the inside cover, I like to write my name, my email, and the date that I started. Um, so I'm going to write all that right in here. Um, I'll just start with a pencil and I can always come back and paint on this or do it with a pen, but for now I'm just going to write it all in here. So you can do something as simple as this. Maybe you have like a business card you could stick in here. Maybe you have like a little book plate or sticker or something that already has your information. Whatever it may be, I just simply put it right here in the inside cover. Then another thing that I like to do is I like to personalize the front of my sketchbooks. I've seen people even write on the spine with like a sharpie, so you could do that. You could put in the dates that you started to when you ended. Um, I have a handful of stickers here and I thought it'd be really fun to put a sticker on it. So, so I'm just going to kind of look at what stickers I have from my stash and see perhaps what might work. I do like that. I love this one that says wild child. That's what my parents always called me. <laughs> Even though I'm a more mild mannered woman now, I was kind of a wild child. Colorado. No, I don't want that. Hmm. This one's by Randy Lynn, I think is her name. Um, I got one of her stickers. I think this box is very cute. I might go with that one. And this one is smaller, but find me in the forest. I do love foresty things. <laughs> As you can see. I'm kind of debating between this one and this one. I should see what it looks like with this on it. Although I probably won't keep the band on there all the time. But you know, sometimes you might want to. If I centered this one. It'll just cover a little bit. I might just go with this little one. That looks good. Yeah! So now I have broken it in and I have broken in the spine a little bit, given it a nice stretch, written over here, done this. Yay! That's fantastic. So something else you can do in here is you could write out maybe a favorite quote that you um, love, something that will like resonate more with your life right now. You could write it in here, do calligraphy, you could just write it like I did with this. Just something that might, you know, spark some more creativity and just, you know, maybe what you want to focus on this year and this time that you are working through this sketchbook. Fear of messing up. This is 100% something that I think all artists have happened, whether it's a sketchbook, a new painting, a new drawing, a new filmmaking thing, like whatever you are creating as a creative person, you might have that fear of messing up. Something I heard recently from another artist is you got to make marks to be an artist. In your sketchbook, there are no mistakes. Like it's just a sketchbook. There's no perfect sketchbook out there. I have seen artists even rip out ugly sheets from their sketchbook, which you can totally do. It's your sketchbook. Beat it up, tear it up, burn it, do whatever you want to with your sketchbook. But there's no perfect sketchbook out there. So just get over that thought in your brain thinking that your sketchbook has to be perfect because believe me, I have pages even in this sketchbook. I even have this one where I started putting marks down and then I abandoned it because I was like, this isn't, this isn't working. So I moved on to the next page for things. But there are definitely ugly pages um, within, within your sketchbook. So don't be afraid that there's going to be ugliness in your sketchbook, which I understand. In a nice new one, you want it to be clean and pristine, but it's okay. It can totally be messy, but I do have some tips to at least get you started on your sketchbook so you don't feel like it's just gonna be an ugly blob or something that you might create. And if you do, that's totally okay too. So you can really learn from all the messy bits, the messy blobs, the complete failures that you might think that are happening in your sketchbook. You learn from them, especially like when you're trying out a new medium or something, 
you could be painting along and hate so much about what it is, but there's a tiny little part of it, like in a corner or for me, I had a painting where I was trying to do like the little smoke, you know, coming out of like the chimney of a house and I hated it in my sketchbook. Like I was like, the first one I did, I was like, oh, that is, that's not very pretty. But then just off to the side, I just practiced a few times and then I was like, oh, I love this. I love this part of it. It's a perfect way for you to embrace that mess and the messiness that it can be to learn and grow as an artist. Because by having this type of mindset of embracing the mess and not worrying if it gets super ugly or anything, you'll be able to just jump right in. Like if you don't have that fear, you can just jump right into your sketchbook, new, old, almost finished. It's just, it's a new page. It's a new spread for you to jump in and just start creating because sure, you might mess up. You know what? You flip the page, you do it again. You try another little area of the sketchbook, especially if you have like a bigger one and test out how to paint the little smoke, you know, bits coming out of a chimney and you can just, you can learn from it. It's like a perfect learning tool that you are the one in charge and doing. And it's, oh, it's so fun to play in your sketchbook. And I understand you might have the fear of the blank page. It's okay. Another thing you can do for your new sketchbook is you can set an intention for it. I have heard of artists setting intentions of kind of what they would like this particular sketchbook to be. For instance, this one that I got a um, handful of months ago, and I'm almost done with it. Um, this was definitely playing with more landscapes because it's already like in that landscape format. It was a place for me to play with graphite. I have, it's a watercolor graphite. So it comes in this little pan and I think this is going to last me forever because a little bit goes a long way, but you can dip your brush in it and you can play with it. So this sketchbook was more about playing with water soluble graphites, doing regular pencils, mechanical pencils, color tinted graphite, graphite in tins like this. Also playing around with this water soluble graphite by Lyra. Um, it's just a big chunky like crayon and you know, you can play with it, but that's kind of what this intention of this particular sketchbook was for me. Um, now I did try other things. I tried pastels. I tried colored pencils. Um, I did try other things because you can do that. But I liked setting that intention of what this sketchbook is was going to be for me. So you can do that with your new sketchbook as well. So for me with this one, um, because it is a square format, but then it also can be a landscape format is I want to play around. I've, I've seen and heard that this paper does take gouache fairly well. So I want to explore and experiment with my gouache paints in in this sketchbook. So I know that that's something going into it that I kind of want to play around with. You can also, besides just like the actual medium you might want to be trying, you can set the intention of, this is going to be my travel sketchbook. Cause maybe you travel a lot. So you want to take this with you and you want to journal in it. Cause you can also write in your sketchbooks as well. You can paint and write stick things in it so you can make it more of a travel journal if you wanted. You can want to be trying a new style, like perhaps there's an artist out there that you're very inspired by that you want to try out their style. I, I have done that. I have seen other artists who do bright, bold colors and I've played around with it in my sketchbook. It's a perfect place to learn from as well. But essentially for that fear of the first page and the fear of messing up, you just want to have fun with it all and you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself even if you bought a really expensive sketchbook which i do have some of those on my on my bookshelf that i have only just done like a handful of pages but i like getting more inexpensive sketchbooks to build that courage up of me painting of me drawing of me building my skill set as an artist and it's just a wonderful place to have fun a couple of tips that i have for your first page. You could also use this for other pages. This is definitely really good for your first page of your new sketchbook that you have. So start with something that inspires you or what you love to paint or draw. Staying within more of your comfort zone of what you're used to painting and drawing and sketching or whatnot 
is going to be a perfect way to just get that first page done to feel good like yeah it's my new sketchbook i've painted or drawn or sketched or whatever right on the first page so you can move on to the second page and the third and the fourth and so on so starting with something that you know so i know that because this sketchbook i want to explore my gouache paintings i'm going to stick with something that i know and i know that i can paint little tiny landscapes from reference photos from my memory from different things like that and i'm going to use the techniques that i know i can use with my gouache paints with my brushes with the amount of water that i mix with it i already know these skills so i'm going to start my new sketchbook with all these skills that I already know because it's going to make me less anxious for the first page. I can get anxious sometimes, especially when I'm trying out something brand new or I'm trying to learn from another artist or, you know, be inspired by other, other pictures, other paintings, other drawings. So I like to start with something that I know. It makes me less anxious. It builds my confidence of like, yeah, I'm beginning this new sketchbook and it's something that I like. And if I choose to share it, like on social media, it can at least start with one of my prettier, you know, sketches that I've done. And then if I mess up on page two, that's okay. At least I have page one of something that I already know. And another tip that I have for your first page is you can keep it private. Like I just said that I could share it if I wanted to, but you can also keep your sketchbook completely private. You can keep it private from not sharing it on social media, from not sharing it with your friends or your partner or your family. You can keep it very, very private if you want to because that can take stress of messing up, the judgment I might think that other people might have on my sketchbook. Um, and then if I want to share it later, I totally can. But kind of like my morning pages um, for my Artist Way course that I had done last year, which I have videos all about that if you want to check that out. My morning pages were completely private. No one has ever been able to read them. My husband has not read them. I haven't even like gone back and read them. It was just a judgment-free zone for me to write out all my thoughts, all my feelings, without the fear of anybody else reading it, which could then bring in a lot of issues, right? So same with my sketchbook. Sometimes you just don't want to share it with anybody and that that is totally okay. So that's another tip for you. And another tip is setting realistic expectations. Try not to have this sketchbook be like, it's gonna be a masterpiece and I'm gonna scan it and sell it as prints. Like every single page in your sketchbook does not have to be a masterpiece or a beautiful piece of work, whether you're sharing it, trying to sell it, any of those things. Like just set realistic expectations with yourself with this sketchbook. If you were to have that expectation that it needs to be perfect, it might stop your creativity. Like if you are sitting there and you're painting and you're like, oh, I really want to try this, this bold color or this different color I haven't done before. If you think that your goal of this piece is to sell it, to share it, and it needs to be perfect, you may not try that new exploration of this bright yellow or this bright blue or something that you've never done before. So I encourage you to set super realistic expectations, try new things within your sketchbook, because again, you can learn from it. Sometimes you can pick a bold color that you never thought was going to complement maybe the way that you painted something. Set realistic expectations that this is just a place for you to create. No judgments, no nothing, just it's there for you to create and just let all your emotions, all your feelings, all your thoughts and ideas out on the page. And it also doesn't have to be big grand ideas. It could literally just be cute little doodles of things on your desk or if you're at a coffee shop or you're at a park or something. Like it could just be, you know, those cute little doodles that, that you might do like in the margins of paper or something. But your sketchbook, that page could just be lots of tiny little doodles and that's totally okay. Because this page that you are creating is just one little page of your whole entire sketchbook, of your whole entire sketchbooks, because perhaps you have three sketchbooks that are already filled, or you might be an artist that has been doing this for decades and you have like 40 sketchbooks. This is just one page. So just know that it's okay. This is part of the whole journey of you learning. That is what sketchbooks I feel are for, are to 
learn and grow and come up with ideas, try out new things. And sometimes you do paint beautiful masterpieces that you want to, you know, sell or scan and create prints or something like you can hundred percent do that. But sometimes, sometimes it's just there for you to play around and get to know, get to know your sketchbook, get to know yourself, get to know your art mediums, you know, the supplies that you're using. So just have fun with it and give yourself permission to focus on playing in your sketchbook, to focus on the whole process of of starting this new sketchbook that you have that you may or may not have set intentions of what you want it to be but just this whole journey of going through this sketchbook give yourself permission to play and to not be focused on the outcome of making it a perfect piece some of your pieces again may be wonderful but give yourself permission that it's not always going to be a perfect piece but it's more about the journey than than the end result here are eight ideas that I have for your first page of your sketchbook. So I have seen this artist, her name is Jess Carp. I follow her on YouTube and she does in her new sketchbooks like a whole welcome sign. So not only is it just the first page that has her name and the date that she started, she creates like a whole spread just right there in the first front inside cover onto that first page of a beautiful like welcome sign. Um, you can do this. I, again, I like to start with just my name and I keep it more simple, but you can. You could even doodle and make cute little borders around it, but you can make a whole first page welcome. You've set your intention for what you want the sketchbook to be. So you open it and boom, you know exactly what the sketchbook is about. It could be like, for instance, my previous sketchbook was more so about graphite. So my whole front page could be just all in graphite, or if I'm exploring bold colors, or I'm exploring the outdoors and more nature related things, just whatever you may want your sketchbook, at least to begin with, you can just put that right there on the first page. Another idea, especially if you go with a more simple beginning, Maybe that first page is just a list of all the things that you like to create. Maybe you like painting landscapes, or for me, it's like sketching botanicals and different flowers. So you could write a whole list of five things, 10 things, 20 things, and just have a running list of all the things that you like to paint, draw, create, whatever it may be. So if you're ever feeling stuck in the future of what you should paint or draw, you can go back to this reference list that you created right there at the beginning of your sketchbook and maybe you tick them off like as you do them so that you can at least try everything that you have written down. So that's another idea where it's just writing. And I know that that may not be painting or drawing or something. It's just getting over the fear of starting this new sketchbook. So by writing your information on the front, writing out a list, it's like, whoa, okay, two pages. Like they've already been been marked up on so now i cannot be like oh no this is so pristine and a brand new one you've already begun so that's another easy thing that you can just begin i have a friend of mine and he likes to start in the back of his sketchbooks his paper that he uses is a little bit thinner so he likes to start in the very back and he'll sketch and if he needs to work on something he can flip the page over and he can kind of see it through through the you know through the page and then he can trace the parts that he likes and then work on the parts that he wanted to, you know, improve on or try a different gesture if he's painting like people or something. So another tip is you can start in the back of your sketchbook, whether you want to be able to put the page over it and, and be able to trace it or just you don't want to start at the beginning of your sketchbook. You want to start in the back. You can do that too. I've also heard of artists who will start like in the middle of their sketchbooks so that they just, they just start, they get out the ideas and then they can go back to the beginning whenever they're feeling it. So feel free to not always start at the beginning of a sketchbook and chronologically go through. I like to do that, but you may not like to do that. So I wanted to put that tip in there for those out there that like to start at the back or the middle of their sketchbooks. Another tip is swatching. So you can swatch in the back of your sketchbook if you don't, like let's say you like to start at the beginning and you don't want your swatches at the beginning of your sketchbook, you can put it in the last few pages. So this is great to test out the materials like 
the pens you have to see if it bleeds or not, you know, within the fibers of your paper, depending on what paper the sketchbook is. You can try out your paints, see if the pages warp a little bit, if you're doing watercolor or more water-based, more water, you know, going on the pages. So that's another tip is to swatch out as many of your materials. And by doing the back of the sketchbook, you could start today with one or two pages of testing out all of your different mediums you want. But then you can go to the beginning of your sketchbook to start painting and oh, look, you got new paints, you got new crayons, you got new whatever the supplies may be. Go to the back of the sketchbook and the next page in the back, you can swatch out your new materials that you have. So that's another tip to start and just swatch a whole bunch of your art mediums that you would like to try in your new sketchbook. Another tip is from artists that I've seen where it's like, if you are afraid of that blank page, so it's not even just the first page, it's the blank page, is you can mark up the pages. You can put washes of color. You can put little scribbles all over it. You can dry brush different paints on it. And um, what I've learned from other artists is you do that much lighter so that when you come to that page after it's dried or whatnot, and it's another, another day for you to sketch, is you open to that page and it's not blank anymore. It might have peach and pink tones with a little bit of blue. And then it's just already this nice little base that you have created. So maybe try out five different spreads of just scribbles and washes and just a base of color on your sketchbook pages so that later when you come to it or wait for it to dry, then you can start creating you're not afraid of the blank white or ivory or whatever color of sketchbook you have of that just blankness. It already has some texture to it and it could inspire you of maybe you see something like, oh, the blues over here look like a sky and this is darker over here. This could be the landscape that I want to paint. So start with scribbling and marking up your pages and you don't have to do your whole sketchbook. You could, again, just do like four or five spreads see how you like it. If you love it, continue it onto the rest of the pages. My next tip is getting inspired by other artists. This is just your sketchbook. You can learn from other artists. It could be the masters like Monet or Manet, or you could look at artists on Pinterest or people that you follow on social media, and you can be inspired by them. You can copy them by all means. That's how people learned from like the masters was copying what they did. Now, obviously you cannot sell, please do not go copy someone and then sell it as your own, but you can be inspired. You can learn from them by working through how they approach their paintings or drawings or whatever it may be in your sketchbook. And that can help you explore new ways. Like I follow different artists that do bolder, brighter colors. So I've bought a few of those art mediums and those colors, and I've started playing with it in my own sketchbook. So feel free to be inspired by other artists and learn from them. And another tip that I like to do in my sketchbooks are art challenges. So this is where you could start off small and say that you are going to paint every day for a whole week. So you could do a seven day challenge and just paint every single day. It's only a week. You're going to set aside an hour a day or 30 minutes a day or three hours a day to just paint or draw or doodle or like whatever it is that you're creating collages or different things but setting up an art challenge which there's lots out there as you know there's the one in october the inktober that's the whole month of october there's so many artists out there that do different painting challenges of here's a whole bunch of florals for the month of march or something or here's just a list of you know, prompts that you can paint from or draw from. You can create your own, but doing an art challenge within your sketchbook is a perfect way to be filling up those pages, to start something, and you learn a lot literally by painting or drawing or, you know, whatever, creating every single day. Two years ago where I painted itty bitty paintings and I did one a day for a full month, and I got so good at it and it was so fun and I knew that I only needed to set aside an hour a day. I just woke up, I had all of my, my materials set out on my desk so when I walked into my studio space, 
I was able to just sit down and start. So definitely make it easy for yourself by having all your materials prepped. Now, if you have like a corner like me or something, or you have children or animals or something that might get into your things, you can get like a little bin, put all your things in it that you know you're going to be painting, drawing, your sketchbook, water cup, all that stuff, so that you can just have the bin, open it, and set it all out if you can't actually set it out and leave it out. I have the luxury of being able to leave my stuff out because I don't have like a wonderful pesky little kitty cat that might come and play with things. So you can also put it all in a bin just so it's easier to grab it and go. And my last tip for you for starting your new sketchbook is a site called Map Crunch. So artists do this, they call it map crunching, and you go to the site mapcrunch.com and it will randomly give you a street view anywhere in the world. So you can just randomize it, see it, and now you have a reference photo for you to draw or paint or sketch in your sketchbook. So it just takes away the pressure of figuring out what type of view you want, what you want to draw. Maybe it'll pop up a landscape. Maybe it's a city view where it has the nice, you know, two point perspective of a nice corner cafe or something. And it'll just kind of take out the guesswork of what you should paint or draw in your sketchbook. And it just gives you, gives it to you right there on your screen. And so this is a perfect way if you're having like an artist block of what should I create and you can just see it, be inspired by it and just go with it. So that's my last tip for you if you're feeling stuck on what you should do in your sketchbook.